Hi, I'm Pat DiDomenico, Editorial Director at the HRSpecialist.com and Business Management Daily. You know, as a manager, you know how important it is to use the correct terms with your employees. And using the wrong employment terms can sometimes expose your company to expensive lawsuits. So today we want to take a look at the top five lightning rod terms to avoid with your employees. Number one, permanent employee. Now employment at will is the rule in most states. That means you can terminate an employee at any time for any legal reason. But managers sometimes make the mistake of using terms like permanent when it comes to talking to employees about their jobs. This often happens after employees pass their 90-day probationary period. Managers also make the mistake of promising long-term employment with casual comments like, your job is safe here as long as you do a good job. Now these mistakes essentially promise the employee a job for life and it can destroy at-will status. What's the lesson? Avoid making long-term promises of job security. Don't use words like permanent employee. Instead, start using the term regular employee. Number two, layoff. Managers should use the term layoff only when they end a relationship due to lack of work. If you end the employment relationship for any other reason, call it a discharge. How can one little word be such a big deal? Well, say for example the unemployment office is told that the employee was laid off even though you fired him for stealing. That one little word could make the employee eligible for unemployment compensation, a part of which your company would have to pay. Even more costly is misusing that term when dealing with a government agency that's investigating a discrimination charge. Number three, independent contractor. The consequences of wrongly classifying someone as an independent contractor can be huge. We're talking about back pay, workers comp, tax liability, and discrimination liability. But simply labeling someone as an independent contractor won't make it stick. Determining a worker's status as either an independent contractor or an employee hinges on various factors. Most important, your degree of control over that employee. The more control you exert, the more possible that the person will be deemed an employee. So, talk to HR, talk to your company officials or your attorney if there's any question about the person's status at all. Number four, exempt employee. When determining which employees are eligible for overtime pay, Every employee falls into one of two categories, either exempt or non-exempt under the Fair Labor Standards Act. Now exempt employees, like managers and executives, are not eligible for overtime pay. They're paid for the work that they do, not the time it takes to do it. Non-exempt employees are eligible for overtime pay. They're typically paid hourly. Managers often mistakenly label employees as exempt, sometimes just to avoid paying the overtime. But again, simply labeling someone as exempt doesn't make them so. The actual work they perform is what matters, not the title. Now, non-exempt and exempt issues can be confusing. Our company offers a free checklist to help you make that decision correctly. You can find our exempt versus non-exempt checklist at www.thrspecialist.com slash checklist. The final lightning rod term, number five, is disability. If an employee qualifies as disabled under the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, or a state disability law, your company must make reasonable accommodations for that person's disability. Now that can include anything from new furniture to a new work schedule. Unfortunately, there's no definitive laundry list of medical conditions that qualify as disabled under the ADA. The decision really must be a case-by-case -case basis. So don't guess at whether the person is disabled or informally refer to the person as a disabled employee. Federal law says that if you perceive an employee as disabled, the law will cover him and you'd have to accommodate that person's ailments. So consult your HR department or attorney if you have any questions. Thank you for joining me today for the five lightning rod terms to avoid with employees. I'm Pat Domenico, Editorial Director at the HRSpecialist.com and Business Management Daily.